they're also solely focused on short-term profits, and they're in complete denial about the negative effects. Just kidding. Yeah, totally. So here we see the New York Stock Exchange looks like an ATM spitting out all these dollars. The U.S. Capitol is, is a laser jet printer just spewing out permits to whoever wants them. And there's this revolving door with these shady characters running back and forth between big business and big government. Because it's all too common a story nowadays that if someone does a good job working for the EPA, and I mean good job by industry standards, then as soon as they retire from that, they get scooped up in a nice, cushy job working for um, the board of directors at a mining company or something like that, and vice versa. So these, so. Um, Mining companies and, and, and bankers and politicians are in denial about the negative effects of these extractive processes, but I just want to tell you all, extreme extractive processes have extremely negative effects, especially on water. Um, I already mentioned that acid mine drainage is a permanent source of water pollution. And not only that, but it flows downstream far away from the point of extraction. Um, it, it can pollute rivers for miles below these mine sites. And it kills off the little tiny microfauna, which are the basis of the aquatic food chain. If it doesn't kill them off, it may, but these heavy metals may bioaccumulate up the food chain so that there might be fish in our streams and rivers still, but we can't eat them because they're full of mercury and stuff like that. And uh, here, there's, there's, there's lots of negative effects on people. Um, this gardener frog is looking all freaked out because her tomato plants are blighted because of, because of the, the heavy metals and, and petrochemical poisons in the soil. She's got a scar on her side. Maybe she got a tumor removed or her gallbladder or part of her liver removed. These are all symptoms of heavy metal poisoning as well as things like brain tumors, birth defects, people just gradually losing their mental capacity even at a very early age. And that little tadpole is looking all freaked out because there's black water coming out of the taps. Um, when, when uh, sometimes, you know, pollution and, and heavy metals can leach downward into the groundwater. And in fact, in places like northern Wisconsin around the Pinocchio Hills, the water table is like 15 feet below the surface. So the acid mine drainage that is certainly going to come out of that mine is certainly going to go into people's groundwater. And when groundwater is polluted, it's polluted forever. It will never be clean again in any concept of time that we have. Also, in areas where fracking is happening, I, I've been hearing more and more often lately about families in Ohio and Pennsylvania and Wyoming and Colorado reporting that their tap water now lights on fire because of the methane pollution that's gotten into the groundwater. Extreme resource extraction can also lead to extreme disasters. I'll just mention one. Uh, the, in 2010, there was an Enbridge tar sands pipeline uh, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, burst open and spilled out 900,000 gallons of diluted bitumen into the Kalamazoo River, polluting the river for miles downstream. Bitumen, just like any heavy metals, uh, is heavier than water which means it sank down to the bottom and got all mixed in with the sand and the muck at the bottom of the river, and there's nothing they can do to clean it up. So now, four years later, this stuff is continuing to pollute that river and poison uh, everyone downstream. And, 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 and also, I'm, have, have you all been paying attention to what's been happening in Appalachia, where mountaintop removal happens over the last few months? I mean, there have been three major coal waste spills in West Virginia alone. And in North Carolina, 27 million gallons of coal waste spilled into the Dan River. These types of accidents are happening more and more often. My friend Kevin was telling me about how often the trains that are carrying oil from the Dakotas are crashing and are leaking into rivers and, and into, into towns. And all this stuff, is, it's becoming like a commonplace occurrence. And that's a whole different type of oil that explodes on impact, mm -hmm. and they're putting it into not the new tankers, but the old tankers. Mm -hmm. That's so. There's a couple other points that I'm going to touch on briefly, um, because I think we're all uh, 
fairly well aware of them nowadays. Burning all these fossil fuels is, uh, is, is, is fueling climate chaos. We see the smokestacks are turning into a hurricane here. And if you notice some of the details on that power plant I showed earlier, the transformers look like missiles, the smokestacks look like Gatling guns, there's a big bald eagle on the power tower there. It seems that our government here is committing itself to, a, to an endless series of global resource wars to get at these last little bits of fossil fuels and other valuable resources that are left. I think a lot of people are well aware of the fact that the invasion of Iraq was spurred on by its huge reserves of oil, but a lot of people don't realize that Afghanistan is full of natural gas and that the drug war in Colombia is opening up space for uh, oil and coal and, and, and metal mining. You know, there's, there's a common thread that runs through all of these things. So where do we fit in all of this? Uh, you know, this, this whole, the, the, the pyramid scheme is kind of a setup, right? It works so well because it, it, it has us glued in. We're kind of coerced to take part in it. Because we just got bills. Right? You gotta pay for rent, you gotta pay for medicine, you gotta pay to feed your kids, you maybe have to pay to send your kids to school so they can get a job, so they can pay for their bills. And here we see this scene that we call the Dance of Hard Choices. The Dance of Hard Choices is starring Frog Miner. Frog Miner works in the extractive industry, you know, directly working in mining, but, um, but many of the jobs that many of us hold, even if we're not directly working in the extractive industry, we're tied into it. Right? Whether you work at, uh, at a coffee shop, or a grocery store checkout, or in an office, or as a lawyer, um, are, are, are uh, many, uh, many different industries and occupations uh, require some sort of extractive process to keep going. So Frog Miner is detonating some explosives, blasting open the mine site near its home place. It's getting a paycheck in return a paycheck on the end of a fishing line. And in step two, Frog Miner maybe got hurt on the job, or maybe Frog Miner is just sick from, from the heavy metals in its water, or the air pollution coming from a, a coal-burning power plant, or a trash incinerating power plant, or something of that nature. That little tadpole is pouring that black water out of the tap again. In step three, uh -oh, Frog Miner goes to the doctor, who's represented as a well-endorsed pharmaceutical jackass, <laughs> and hands over a fat wad of cash in return for highly addictive prescription painkillers and bottled water. In step four, Frog Miner has only a handful of change left, so he puts his hard hat back on and heads back to work. While this little one is considering this other well-traveled path that maybe leads to, to the city, leads to some place where it can find a different job. Because even, it's not 